I have completely revamped the credit cards that I use. This past year, I experimented with a ton of different cards and I settled on a system that pays me around 5% cash back on everything I buy. Hey there, Dave here. If you're an OG around here, you've seen this and this, and today I'm gonna reveal my new system. It may look complicated, but you'll see that I've actually simplified the way that I use my credit cards to maximize cash back. Again, my goal, 5% back on everything without any annual fees. And I do have a couple of cards with an annual fee, but I have a simple rule on that. The fee has to pay for itself and only with incremental cash back from purchases that I would make anyway, or from perks that I would actually pay for if they weren't a perk talked a lot about that before, but this is what works for me. Your spending is going to be different than mine, but think of my system as a way to think about your own spending and which assortment of cards might work best for you. My spending, it's pretty evenly divided between travel, dining, and everything else. So those are the categories that I try to maximize. Travel and dining are pretty easy, but you'd be surprised at how much actually ends up being in that non-category, everything else category. But not enough in most of the subcategories like grocery stores or streaming services or entertainment or whatever to try to find a specific card for that category. I like to keep it simple and I really only carry two cards in my wallet with a few others saved in online accounts. Also, I probably spend more on credit cards than most people. I'll be cashing in all of my cards at the end of the year. Look for that video sometime in January. Like I said, my goal, 5% cash back on everything. This past year, I briefly did that using a single card, the rosegoldcrypto.com card, but crypto.com must have realized that giving away 5% back on everything and also paying a crazy 14% on money in your account completely unsustainable. They realized that even before the crypto market collapsed the first time, I guess they saw it coming and majorly slashed those programs. I used the crypto.com card for about the first half of the year and I'd gotten really used to that 5% back on everything. So I spent the rest of the year trying to find a way to get as close as possible to that with an assortment of cards, but still keeping as few cards as possible and keeping my system as simple as possible. Let's start with the cards that I do not keep in my wallet. I call these my default cards because I only only use them for very specific things. And both of these give me 5% cash back. First, the Amazon Prime card from Chase. It is an old favorite. I've been using it for years. It pays 5% back on all Amazon purchases as well as at Whole Foods. There's no annual fee, but the 5% is only for Prime members. It's 3% if you don't have Prime. But I've been paying for Prime for years since long before this card even existed. I think Prime is like $139 a year. It's cheaper for students. Oh, and by the way, this year I discovered a way to get Prime for free. It is an underappreciated feature called the Amazon Household Program, which lets two adults share a Prime account. So my girlfriend Megan and I both were paying for Prime. I canceled my Prime, she's still paying, so I get to use her Prime for free. And I can confirm that I still am getting the 5% back using the card. And fortunately, I know the odds of Megan ever watching one of my credit card videos is extremely low. Anyway, I just keep my Prime card saved in the Prime account. You may also want to save the card in your Apple Pay wallet if you shop at Whole Foods. It's simple, it's easy, it's automatic, 5% back. That's perfect. Next, a new card for me, the City Custom Cash Card. There is no annual fee. The card gives you 5% back in your highest spending category, up to $500 spent per month, then it's 1% on everything else. So I looked at all my spending for the past year, compared it to the categories that qualify, and I found the one that I consistently spend in, but that I have never gone over $500 a month in, and for me, that is gas stations. So this is now the card that I use in my Apple Pay wallet at gas stations. And because for some reason, every gas stations tapped pay reader always seems to be broken. I also keep the physical card in my car. So this card is great for me. I actually did a product change from my old 2% city double cash card because I've had that card since 2017 and older accounts are good for your credit score. So I didn't want to close that account, but I didn't get a sign up bonus, but they do have one. I'll put an affiliate link down in the description right now. I think it's $200 when you spend $1,500 in the first six months. So those two are simple enough for 5% on Amazon and gas. And I'm going to just reveal everything Thing and then explain exactly what's going on here, starting with dining. If I'm at a restaurant or using DoorDash or pretty much any dining, I'm now using the Amex Gold Card for 4.4% cash back. That's four times points on dining, and those are worth 1.1 cents each, thanks to the Schwab edition of the Platinum Card, which makes your points worth nearly twice as much as they would be redeeming for cash on the Amex site. This is a new card for me. If you're an OG viewer here, you know that I used to use the Bank of America Cash Rewards Card for 5.25% back in dining with no annual fee and moved that card to a new spot in my system. The Amex Gold Card does have an annual fee and it's a big one, $250 a year. 
So why did I switch to a card that has an annual fee and 4.4% cash back instead of no annual fee and 5.25% cash back? Well, thanks in part to some savvy commenters on the video where I cashed in all of my cards last year, they noticed that I should have maximized the B of A cash card at $525 of total cash back for the year because the card has a $2,500 per quarter cap on the top category. That's $10,000 a year spent worth 5.25% back or a total of $525 cash back. But I actually Actually cashed in more than $900. So I did the math and I excluded all of the non-dining charges, which was a surprisingly high amount of things categorized as food stores or other retail that I think probably should have been counted as dining. But anyway, I found that on a total of $29,000 of spending in qualified dining, my effective cashback rate was nowhere near 5.25%. It was actually just 2.93%. I knew that I could do better than that, so I compared all of the cards that say they have more than 3% cash back on dining. I factored in the long-term effect of annual fees and any sign-up bonuses that I'd qualify for, and I also factored in those spending caps that killed me on the Bank of America card, and I calculated my typical spending on dining, and I also tested for higher and lower than expected spending. I did way more analysis than any normal person would do, and ultimately, I went with the Amex Gold card, which for me, the unlimited 4.4% on dining will Come out ahead even after paying a $250 annual fee every year for the next four years. It took that long based on my spending last year for the next closest card to catch up. And when I modeled more spending next year, which I expect will happen because of inflation, the gold card actually beat the next closest card for even longer. So all of that to say, I really like this card for dining. And if you're like me and spend a lot in that category, it might make sense for you too. This card also does have four times points on groceries on up to $25,000 a year. Year. I don't buy enough groceries to bother factoring that in. It has three times points on airfare, but I use a different card for that. It also has some other perks that I did not factor in, like a $10 a month credit at a handful of restaurants. I'm not gonna go out of my way to eat at these restaurants, but I might benefit from this. There is a $10 a month Uber credit though for rides or dining, which I didn't factor in, but I probably will be able to use every month. When I signed up for the card, I found a higher than usual sign up bonus offer of 90,000 points after spending $4,000 during the first six months. The bonus offer typically is 60,000 points. If you want to use my affiliate link, you can see if that bonus offer is still available. I partnered with creditcards.com. They keep all the offers up to date, so I don't have to. But be on the lookout for those high offers because they essentially can pay for the first few years of the annual fee. Now back to the chart. If it's not a restaurant, my next question, is it airfare or hotels? And if so, does it qualify for five times points on the Amex Platinum card? All airfare qualifies for five times points when you book directly with the airline or on the Amex Travel website. For hotels though, only rooms that you book on Amex Travel get those five times points. And again, with the Schwab version of the Amex Platinum card, those five times points are worth 1.1 cents each, which is 5.5% back. So if I find a better price on airfare, somewhere else that doesn't qualify for five times points like Expedia or Booking.com, I'll use my old Bank of America cash card for 5.25% back for the flight. And yes, that is capped at $2,500 per quarter, but I think for me, it's way easier to keep track of a couple larger travel purchases than it is with everyday dining. I personally prefer to book hotels directly with the hotel so I can get the hotels points, which you normally do not get if you book a room through the Amex travel site or one of the other booking sites. That said, I always do check every for the best price. I know it's annoying, it's time consuming, but I think it's worth it if I can save a few hundred bucks. I'll usually check the Amex travel site and Google travel to figure out where I wanna stay on the map and based on reviews. And then I will check the hotel's website and see if there's more than a hundred dollar difference. I'll always book where I get the best price regardless of the points or cash back. If Amex travel has the best price or other perks for the fine hotels or hotel collection, I'll book on Amex travel and I'll use my platinum card. If Google travel has a sponsored listing with the best price, I'll use the Bank of America cash card, or if the hotel's own website has the best price, or if I have enough points to book the room for free, and those points seem to be valued at a reasonable rate, I'll book directly with the hotel. Okay, that was a lot, uh, but as far as my two biggest actual categories, that's what I do, but I actually do spend the most in what the industry calls non-category spend, 
I call that my everything else category. There are several cards that give 2% back on everything, like the City Double Cash card. If you're new to this game or getting less than 2% back on everything, that is a great card with no annual fee. I had been doing better than 2% for a while now. I've been earning 2.625% back on everything, and that was with my Bank of America Premium Rewards card. That card pays 1.5% back on everything, but then they give you a 75% bonus from the Preferred Rewards Program, which makes it 2.625 back. But to get that bonus, you have to have a $100,000 average balance at Bank of America, and the card also has a $95 annual fee, so that extra 0.625% earnings is only worth it if you spend more than $15,200, because otherwise you would be better off with a no annual fee card and 2% cash back. And again, I did way more research trying to beat that than any reasonable person should. My criteria this time around, it had to have no categories. It had to pay better than 2.625% with no cap on earnings that you don't have to do anything special to earn and preferably with no annual fee. The card I went with is the X1 credit card, which normally is 2% back on everything, but I think one of the most underappreciated features of the card is when you spend $15,000 in a year, all of the purchases for the full year are boosted up to 3%. Technically, it is two times points that becomes three times points, but those points are worth a penny a point. And technically, they do limit the extra point per dollar to the first $7,500 per month, which is effectively 3% cash back on up to $90,000 a year in spend. Be careful though, because they do have some redemption offers that offer less than a penny a point, like if you want to redeem for actual cash, but there are plenty of choices to redeem for a full one-to-one -one ratio of a penny a point. So three times points is worth 3% cash back. And another underappreciated feature of this card is the refer a friend bonus. They have recently updated it. It used to be you would get 30 days of four times points for every friend. Now it is a mystery where you'll get either four times or five times or even 10 times points when you refer a friend for up to 30 days. I haven't yet gotten the 10 times referral yet, but I have referred enough people for me to get four times points until I think October of next year. So obviously I'd like to personally invite you to get this card too. Hey there TV slash X1. That's my referral link. A couple of other pro tips for this card. Uh, since this is your everything else card, you're probably going to do these things anyway, but make sure you check the redemption merchants and use the card with at least one that has some smaller charges because you need to have enough points to pay off the entire charge. I personally buy a lot of stuff from Apple, so I use X1 card for my Apple products and also subscriptions like Apple One. And when I buy movies on Apple TV or my iPhone apps, so you can get 3% back, which is the same as the Apple card would give you, but you can also use the points from X1 to pay off those small Apple purchases along with the bigger ones. This year, I think I will have enough points to pay for my iPhone and then some. So that is my system. It is so simple now. I don't even need a flow chart. I use the Amazon card for Amazon, City Custom Cash for gas. The Amex Platinum card goes in my wallet when I travel. I also bring along the Bank of America Cash card. I use that when I check into a hotel for incidentals. I also started using that card for Uber since that counts as travel. Then in my everyday wallet, it is just the Amex Gold card for restaurants. And that's also saved in DoorDash and the other food apps. And for everything else, it is the X1 card for the three to 4% back on on that elusive everything else category. These are the cards that I use and I will link to all of the referral links for current bonus offers, but think about how you spend and look for the categories where you spend the most and try to find the cards that give you the most cash back in those categories. You can browse around my creditcards.com link for a ton of other useful information. They keep that up to date so that I don't have to. Hopefully some of this was helpful to you. If so, or even if you just liked watching and you're still with me, I would really appreciate it if you would just take one second, hit the like button, also drop a comment to let me know you made it to the end. That is the latest from here. I'm Dave Hansen. I'll see you back there for the next Hey There Dave here.